everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then welcome. I really hope you enjoy the first video and welcome to one of my first videos of 2020. We are here today for a savings video and today I wanted to bring you some really easy savings tips that anyone can achieve no matter how much money you have. If you have money to save, if you have no money to save whatsoever, these tips are guaranteed to help you save in 2020 to reach your savings goal. Of course if you have more money you could save more than others but these tips are so so easy and, and literally anyone can use them so I really hope you find this video helpful I wanted to do a motivational video as one of my first 2020 videos because we kick starting a new year we want this year to be productive we want to get to the end of 2020 and feel really good and that we've all achieved something and I feel like saving and making little adjustments to help reach your savings goal is absolutely perfect for that so before we get into the video I want you all to get a pen and paper or your phone use the notes tab on your phone and after I mention each tip I'd like you to pause the video and write down a way that you are going to help yourself achieve that particular tip obviously you don't have to but I feel like when you write something down you're more likely to go back and actually do it whereas there's a lot of times I've watched videos and then I think that sounds great but I forget about it so make yourself a to-do list and ways that you can help achieve every single tip that I'm going to mention to you now so let's get into the video so the first tip is going to be check your bank account so there's lots of different ways you can save money with your bank account the first one being if you switch your bank account you can often benefit from an incentive at outset so a lot of banks offer a lump sum of money if you switch to them and it's completely free to switch it's so easy you simply fill out an online application form it literally takes 10 minutes you switch and then you get the incentive I had a 200 pounds incentive switching to my bank that was a couple of years ago but so actually it's about time I check on my bank account as well but it's really easy to do just go online go on any comparison websites and see if there's any incentives available another thing that you should really check with your bank account is the interest rate you're receiving so this applies more to people that do have savings already but check the interest rate you're getting is it the best rate available again there's lots of comparison websites you can look at to help you compare the best interest for the amount of savings that you have it's a really easy way of just getting that extra little bit of cash every single year for simply doing a bit of research online also if you have savings have you put them into an ISA or are they just in your bank account an ISA is a tax-free environment so again it benefits you because you're not going to be paying any tax at all on the interest not everyone will pay tax on their interest anyway, but it's always worth putting it into an ISA just to make sure it's 100% tax free. So when we are shopping online, because let's face it guys, even if we are trying to save, we're always going to be doing shopping. There's always things you need to buy, there's always essentials, and sometimes you just want to treat yourself, and that's absolutely fine. And when you are going to start treating yourself, make sure to look out for discount codes or coupons. When I shop online, I always make sure to type into Google, discount codes for and then whatever the brand is just to make sure I'm getting the most money off that item that I possibly can. A website that I use quite often is voucherco's.co.uk and that just has every single discount code available for a particular brand and it's so easy to apply and then put it straight in the basket with the whatever website you're using. If you're looking to use an app there's an app called Shop Tagger which I have worked with previously before and that's another app where you can save items in your wish list and then it notifies you when the items have gone on sale. So shop smartly if you are going to spend the money if there is something you want to buy maybe wait till it goes in sale or wait till you can find a nice discount code because that is going to help you get money off and the money that you're going to spend on the item I suggest putting that straight into a savings account because it's money you were prepared to part with so put it straight into your savings account and act as if it was spent and that way you can start accumulating funds without even thinking about it. Speaking of discount codes you can also get cash back on lots of items as well again there's lots of apps available for this and websites I haven't got a particular one that I would recommend I'd suggest doing some research yourself but there's certainly websites and apps that offer you cash back and that's basically where you buy an item and then you get a percentage of cash back for shopping via that website or via that app so a lot of the time the cash back will be between kind of five and fifteen percent so it's certainly worth looking at as well and again this is a nice way to accumulate some money back money that you would have spent anyway and then I suggest putting all that cash back straight into your savings account and act as if it was spent and again watch the pennies watch the pounds grow throughout the year these little tips at first might not necessarily appear like 
a massive saving but believe me when you apply this tip every single day for a whole year at the end of the year you'll be really pleased that you apply these tips something i have said before but i really really strongly suggest and that is getting an app to review your income and outgoings so the app that i've used previously is called money dashboard and i use that via the app store for an iphone and that's a really really great app you basically sign into all of your bank accounts or bank account your main account whatever one has all the income and outgoings via the app and then it logs every single transaction in your bank account you can then categorize every single transaction into things like essential expenses just to say for your household such as bills and you can also categorize non-essential expenditure things that you don't actually need such as takeaways or buying new clothes and things like that and it's a really really great way to monitor where your money is going because so many people say to me i just can't save and i think you probably can i appreciate not everyone out there can save but if you analyze every single penny you're spending i'm sure you'll be able to find a little amount somewhere even if it's just five pounds a week that you can save everyone can try and aim to save something so i I strongly suggest reviewing everything that you have coming in, everything that is going out, and is everything going out actually an essential expenditure? And if it's not, would you rather put that in savings and let it grow instead of keep buying things that you don't necessarily need? And using apps like that is such an eye opener as well because it really helps you to realize actually, I don't need to spend all the money I've got because the amount of friends I've had, which again, thought that they didn't have any spare money at all to save every month. And then when they started reviewing what they were actually spending money on, they realized there was quite a few hundred pounds going out each month that they didn't actually have to spend. Even down to things like buying fast food, it's still something you don't need to spend. And nipping them in the bud could save you quite a lot of money each month. Something that I'm going to be doing in this new year is looking into my energy suppliers, gas and electricity. And there's a website called U-Switch and you could put all your existing details in, the amount of electricity and gas that you use, and then it will tell you if there's a cheaper alternative available. Often what happens is you'll start with the same supplier and then every single year, your rate will suddenly go up and up and up and up and they don't have you on the most favorable rate. They put you on a rubbish rate. It's really expensive. And if you shop around, you're likely to get a much cheaper deal. And again, this could save you hundreds a year. So it's certainly worth looking at. And it's definitely something that I need to do because I know currently I'm paying through the roof for my gas and electricity, let me tell you. I'm being mugged over for that. So I need to do that one myself and it's on my to-do list. And the thing I love about things like that is again, it doesn't cost you a penny to do. It just takes a little bit of time looking online and then applying for the switch, which again, doesn't take long at all. Really easy applications. They guide you through what needs to be done and then they do the switch for you. So it's literally a matter of setting some time aside. That's all you need to do. It's just gonna cost you a little bit of time to get things in order. And then you're just gonna see the money coming in for just spending a little bit of time, which you were probably going to spend watching Netflix or something, because I am so guilty of that. I am so guilty of not reviewing my own financial situation, because a lot of you guys know I work in financial advice, and I spend a lot of my day, you know, helping clients out with their money, but when it comes to my own money, I don't seem interested a lot of the time, I just want to watch TV, but it's not okay. We can all set aside a little bit of time a week to review things like this. And once you've done it once, you don't need to do it again for another year. Just put it in the diary for next year, and each year just make sure to review it and keep on top of it. So the same applies to any insurance policies you have, and that's referring to things like car insurance, home insurance, contents insurance, if you have any life cover as well, phone insurance, travel insurance, anything like that at all that you pay for annually, make sure you are using comparison websites to find the cheapest deal. So many people stay with the same car provider. It is so expensive. My premium actually goes up next year if I stay with the same provider, which is absolutely insane. So definitely shop around, look for the cheaper deal and even phone them up and negotiate against each other. If you can go on a comparison website and find even two providers that are similar, phone one of them up and say, look, this other company is offering me this, what can you do? And you're likely to get a little bit more of a discount than you were if you went through, say, go compare or compare the market. So definitely take some time out again to make them phone calls, invest a little bit of time, because if it's gonna save you 50, 100 pounds, I think it is so worth it. And again, every single time you do these things, set the money aside that you've saved, into your savings account because that's money you are gonna spend anyway so definitely just put it straight into the savings account act as if it isn't there otherwise you're just going to be saving money doing something to then spend it on something else which kind of defeats the purpose another one that i have said in the past is your phone contract so 
is your phone contract due for renewal? If it is, do you really need to get a new phone? I used to be that person that every single two years would be getting a new iPhone and in some cases, dare I say it, I would get a new iPhone before the end of my contract and I was paying for two contracts for a couple of months, which is ludicrous. I don't know what I was thinking, but I don't do that anymore. I have got a new phone recently because I do use my phone for work. As you guys know, I use my phone all the time for my YouTube and Instagram and I need a fully functioning phone because my last one broke. But I had my previous iPhone for about three years before this, which I know isn't a long time, but as I say, I use mine for work. So the amount of hours that are spent on it is a lot, hence why they break quicker for me. But I did have a SIM only contract for quite a long period of time. And I suggest you guys look into it too. If your phone contract has come to an end and you've been put on a SIM only deal, shop around again. Don't just stick with the company you're currently with because it's likely they're not gonna be giving you the best rate available. Make phone calls again, play them off against each other. That is what it's about. That's the world of business. Companies don't wanna lose your custom. So the likelihood is they're gonna give you a good deal if you phone them and say, well, them so is offering me this what can you do i'm sure they'll try and give you something to make you a new customer or to make you stay with them something that you guys know i do is bulk food prepping so this means stop at the takeaways stop the buying lunches out every day at work start making your food in bulk making your food in bulk has so many benefits number one it stops you overeating or stops you eating rubbish because when you make something yourself, you know it's homemade, you know what's going into it, you can plan in advance and make something healthy. So that's great for your diet and great for your health. Secondly, it's saving you a lot of money because you're not wasting anything, you're using every single scrap of food you've got. Thirdly, you're lessening the electricity bills because you're cooking all at once, all at the same time, and then that is it for the week, which is obviously really, really good. It saves you time as well. Who doesn't love freeing up a bit of extra time? And I feel like that's m most of the benefits. But yeah, I just love food prepping so much. I do it for my lunches every single week, and I also do it for Jordan's lunches and his dinners. So it's just a really, really good thing to do. It's a really good habit to get into. I have now food prepped every single week for the last year without fail, and I've pretty much done it for the last four to five years but I have been consistent every single week for the last year and it honestly saves me so much money because when I do have a lazy day and do decide to buy something from the shops you're spending minimum three to five pounds on your lunch which is a lot of money when you're doing that every single day and again I find a lot of people who tell me they can't save anything are the ones that are spending money every single day on their lunches and they don't have time to food prep but I beg to differ I feel like everyone has time to food prep if you have time to cook yourself a dinner in the evening you have time to food prep because my food prep honestly takes me 10 minutes I chuck all the chicken in a tray season it put some veg in put it in the oven for a couple of hours on a low heat and then put some pasta on or rice whatever it is it is so so easy now i'm not someone who's necessarily going to sit here and promote credit cards although having credit cards isn't actually as bad as people make out because credit cards help you to get more credit if you need it for example if you're 18 and you're struggling to get credit a credit card can help you to build a good credit profile as long as you're making all the payments because it helps to show that you can borrow money and pay it back without any issue but as i say i'm not sitting here promoting promoting credit cards or anything like that but if you do have a credit card then I suggest you look into the credit card you've currently got if you're paying any interest at all I strongly suggest looking into a balance transfer so you can often balance transfer your entire credit that's on a particular card or even consolidate any cards you have into one and you can find a new credit provider who offers a zero percent interest for a period of time now, if you are someone that's done this for years and years and years, you may be out of options because often a credit provider may not let you use them a second time for a 0% balance transfer, but if there's a new provider out there, then it's worth looking into because why not save yourself extortionate interest you're paying every single month and get a 0% for 12 to 18 months because often you can get it for another 12 to 18 and in some cases even 24 months so it's definitely worth looking into to save yourself some extra money because interest is literally dead money you're just paying for debt that you've got which i think is absolutely a waste of time if you can avoid it so definitely look into that there's lots of websites again just google it i'm pretty sure on go compare or one of them sort of comparison websites you can look at credit cards and you could put in the details that you of your current cards and it will do a little soft check to see if you're going to be accepted or not the likelihood of being accepted so definitely look into that it's an easy way to save money decluttering is something that i think is so so great and that means decluttering for a couple of reasons one you're just going to feel nice and clean and fresh your home's going to feel 
minimalist and nice and I love that feeling. I hate clutter. Clutter actually causes me a lot of stress. I just have so much stuff laying around a lot of the time because as you guys know I make a lot of videos and that means I have to keep getting new things for the videos and I do end up with a lot of stuff. So decluttering can help to free your mind and make you feel nice and fresh and clean for the new year. Your home to feel nice and spacious again and it means you can either donate so give the items to charity which I do a lot of but equally you can sell the items as well to get a bit of extra coin because who doesn't like a little bit of extra money there's lots of ways to sell the items you can use ebay you could use gumtree you could use depop which is an app facebook sales is also a really good one i've used facebook sales lots and lots in the past i have had some weird experiences on there but for the most part it has been absolutely fine to make sure you're not home alone when people pick up these things if you're you know if you live by yourself because i just you never know who these weirdos are, that's all I'll say about that one. But yeah, Facebook sales is a really good way to sell things as well. And who doesn't want to make a bit of extra money and clean the house at the same time? So I think that's a great thing to do. Set aside a weekend within the next couple of weeks just to go through your clothes. Is there anything you can get rid of? If it's not quite up to scratch of selling, give it to the charity shop. Do a good deed and the good karma will come back to you. And then my last tip is going to be to do with memberships. So this is nothing outstandingly great. It's just quite a standard thing to do. But just check any memberships you have. Check your direct debits. Go into your bank and see what you are paying out for every month. Do you definitely need to pay out for these things every month? For example, I was paying out for Experian, I think it's called Experian, the credit check software, and I had signed up to a free trial of that a couple of months ago just to review my credit after getting a mortgage to see what it was looking like, and totally forgot to cancel. There we are, two months in, I was paying £15 a month. Definitely didn't need to be paying for that. So just make sure you go through all your transactions and cancel anything you're not using, because what is the point? Do you have a gym membership that you're paying for each month, which is 30 to 50 pounds? Because I know they can be really expensive. And are you actually using it enough? Or is it worth maybe setting aside two to three months worth of premium at say 90 pounds, 100 pounds and buying some equipment and doing it at home? Because it might be an initial investment to make, but that's going to save you a hell of a lot of money in the long run because gym memberships are often you know, 300 pound plus a year, which is a lot of money. Things like Spotify, Netflix, anything like that, these regular outgoings people have, do you really need them? Are you signed up to any apps on your phone, which you don't need as well? Because again, that's something that I get quite caught out with. I end up signing up to something on the, on the app store and then forgetting how to cancel the damn thing and then being stuck with it for a couple of months. And even if they're just a couple of pounds, just cancel them because it's all extra money you can save yourself. So guys, that is the end of my tips for saving this year. I'm going to be doing more of these videos, I hope, anyway, because I know you guys really enjoy watching them, and I love filming them. I love helping you guys, but I wanted to do a really easy one to kickstart the year, because sometimes we don't... Because you know, we don't always have extra money to save every month, and that's absolutely fine, but we all can save money by making just little adjustments in our life. And I really hope that even if you take away one of these tips that I've given you, and it helps you to save even five pounds, then I'll be really happy that I've helped someone. And if you like any of these tips, if you use any of them, let me know in the comments below. If you have any other tips which I haven't mentioned, then put them in the comments below and help me out and help everyone else out, because it's great to share our knowledge and to support each other and help each other grow in the year of 2020. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.